internet, Kaidazard here, and today we are doing Tutorial Tuesday on a Wednesday because it's spring break and I'm lazy and I apologize. So, since the last video was Pokemon Day and I did a Rayquaza that kind of looked like it would eat your face off, for today's tutorial we will be doing this adorable little chibi Rayquaza or something very similar to it. Because this is like a two minute sketch of a chibi right way. So, let's get started. As my first tutorial, I tried to go for something a little more on the simple side. It's only Rayquaza, because my last video was Rayquaza, so I thought this was fitting. Now, for tutorials, um, it would be helpful to tell all of you what you would need to do this. You will obviously need a pencil to do your sketchings with. I'm very attached to these um, mechanical pencils, actually. This one has 0.7 lead. Now, after the sketching is done, you will also need something to ink the drawing with to make it like clean and final. Now for this, I will be using a 0.4 millimeter Sakura brand Pigma pen. And Pigma ink is archival and used for things like manga. And it's awesome. So, now Rayquaza does have lots of black parts on him, like mostly in the eyes and in between the little sections. And so, to avoid using a black colored pencil because I like a cleaner look, I will be using another Pigma ink pen. This one has a brush tip and is Prisma color. Um, brush tips are amazing. They can get fine lines or color in really thick areas, which is why I love them so much. If you watch any of my other videos where I use my combo markers, um, I never ever use the small detail tip. Everything I do is with the brush tips because I love them. Um, now the next part you don't actually have to do. It's something that I do personally, especially with chibis because it makes them adorable. Um, I will be using a one millimeter thick pigment ink marker for the overall outline of Rayquaza. And this will just make him like really stand out on the paper. Um, obviously, after you get your inking done, you will want to erase all of those pesky pencil lines. For this, I will be using this eraser. I am very partial to the white plastic erasers. Even though pink curls erase a lot better, these tend to be nicer to the paper or whatever you're working on. Um, once it's a clean finish line drawing, we will then jump to coloring it. Hooray! Now for this, I'm just using an assortment of cheap Crayola uh, colored pencils. I have a green and a yellow green for the majority of Rayquaza because he is a green dragon, which is probably why Nate wants to battle named his Rayquaza Shenron. Um, we have a golden yellow and a harvest gold for the yellow markings as well as his eyes. Now I use golden yellow instead of actual yellow because yellow just seems too light and bright, even though it's supposed to be a bright yellow. I don't know. Yellow is a color we will say for Pikachu and Jolteon. Rayquaza gets to be different. He gets golden yellow. Um, we also have a red violet raspberry and a pink for the inside of his mouth and his tongue. And then we have a red and a red orange for his mouth as well as the accent on Now a lot of people like to blend the color pencils to make them look nicer when they're done for this. I of course recommend using a white colored pencil or a cream. Um, surprisingly enough, most of Crayola's cream colors um, are very peach toned and stand out on brighter colors. And so we have here white and sand, which sand is just nicer. It's like a very light neutral tan. Step one. Now we have this beautiful 
clean piece of paper. A lot of people are actually intimidated by clean pieces of white paper. Um, this is just really cheap printer paper, so if we mess up, we can scrap it and start over. Because that's how I solve problems. Why do it on a high quality piece of, say, $3 rag paper when I can do it on really cheap crappy paper? So, along with any drawing, we want to, of course, start with a stick figure, which sounds weird, but just watch and it will work. Now, Rayquaza is obviously snake shaped and therefore we will start with a circle E figure for his head and then just a line to suggest where his body goes. So we have the circle for his head, hooray! I know it doesn't quite look like a Rayquaza head yet. Don't be disappointed, it will get there eventually. And there we have a rough stick figure of what our adorable Shibi Rayquaza will look like. So of course, after establishing your stick figure, which does very important things, it maps out proportion and where it fits on the page and overall composition, you know, art student terms. So what we want to do next is establish the basic shapes to start fleshing it out to make it look like the adorable Chibi Rayquaza that it soon will be. At this point, we have our basic shape he kind of looks like a Dratini with a Rayquaza head. Something I personally like to do that you don't have to, but it helps keep the shape and position all together of snake-like things. I do this for, of course, snakes and dragons. If Rayquaza's skin were a dress, you are now marking where the seams would be all the way down his body. Now that we got all that out of the way, if you would like to keep things less confusing, you can of course erase the lines you do not need. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, we can then build onto the basic shapes of Rayquaza's. The little sections of his body, his shoulders, his arms, etc. <laughs> that all my pencil lines look like a jumbled graphite mess, but we will continue on this journey to uh, fill in Rayquaza's little details and his little yellow designs and his tail, because right now he has a detail. Get it? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, the next step now is to, of course, erase the lines that we will not need. This will decrease the amount of confusion when we're inking. Pentimente, contrapasto, <laughs> composition, <laughs> scraffito. Yes. It's when you paint with your palette knife. And then, well, more accurately, it's when you put on paint like super thick and then you use a palette knife or the end of your paintbrush to draw into the paint. That's graffito. <laughs> Okay, now we are done with our sketch. 
The next thing to do, of course, is to ink this bad boy and let it be seen for the line work and its adorable glory. We will take the 0.4 millimeter Pigma pen that was aforementioned. those pesky pencil lines even though Pigma ink is archival um, that will not keep it from smudging so taking a minute before you erase to just let the ink dry and set where it is is awesome and very recommended the pencil lines have been removed we will go through with my friend the brush tip pen and color in all of the black areas of right quasa to reinforce some lines just to make it apparent that parts of Rayquaza are further in front of other parts of him. If that makes sense. For good measure, I am pulling out my one millimeter Pigma pen and just giving a really good bold outline around all of Rayquaza. This adorable Rayquaza is finished being inked and it's beautiful line work and it's just adorable. We will take a minute to let the ink set and dry and then we will begin with the coloring. Ooh, colors! Okay, now remember that lovely assortment of cheap Crayola colored pencils we went over earlier? Now's the time to pull those back out because we're going to use them.
And there you have a finished Chibi Rayquaza that is just as adorable as I anticipated. As always, thanks for watching.